What's up guys? So we are going to solve the no tow hook problem on the 2022 Tundra. Don't know what Toyota was thinking there, but we're going to be putting the CBI covert bumper on the TRD Pro. Let's jump right into it. I'm going to walk you through step by step. Very easy job. Honestly, anybody can do this on their own in their garage or driveway. Let's do it. Couple quick tips before we even get started. Disconnect the negative side of your battery. We are gonna be disconnecting wiring harnesses, so you don't wanna take any chances on throwing codes with these trucks. You know, these new Tundras are kind of finicky when it, when it comes to stuff like this. So disconnect the negative side of your battery. If you have a non-hybrid, you know it's up there. Underneath the hood, if you have a hybrid, you know it's underneath the rear seat. Disconnect negative, make sure it cannot touch. Now, next thing is, if you're doing this by yourself especially, take some painter's tape or mild tape and outline your headlight just like that around the front bumper. The reason for that is, especially if you're doing this alone, when you go to reinstall the bumper after we're all done, you don't wanna take a chance on hitting your headlights and scratching those up. They are very, very expensive. All right, so do those couple things before you get started. What I'm about to show you goes for the driver and passenger side. So first thing we're gonna do, we wanna free up the fender flare. All we're gonna do is simply come in here and the first four, these are 10 millimeter bolts. So one, two, three, and four right here. When I looked underneath here, this one was actually almost falling out of my truck. So that's why it's already gone. But remove those four 10 millimeter bolts and we'll be able to snap the fender flare off the truck. One other thing you may wanna do as you're taking these bolts and these little parts off, get a bowl or a bag or something like that just to set them aside so you don't lose any we will be reusing all of these stock all of the stock hardware for the most part everything i'm going to show you the spots where we will not reuse the stock parts i will let you know so once you have those removed what you can do is just get your hand behind the lip of the fender flare now on the trd pro we're going to have a couple other wiring things that we have to worry about Obviously we have our marker lights right here. There is a wiring harness behind there. So when you pop it loose, don't really you know, pull it out too far. You, you do have some slack there, so it's nothing to worry about, but just so you know, there is a wiring harness behind there. Get your fingers and just give it a, a good pop like that. And basically we wanna separate it up to right here, this crease between the two panels. So once you have it separated like that, you can reach back in here and disconnect the wiring harness. It's just a, um, one of the push down the clip and pull. All right, so we've done the same thing on the passenger side. Next, you wanna come up underneath here. You wanna disconnect these two wiring harnesses right here, can't miss them. Now, depending on your trim level, you may or may not have the same amount of harnesses, but if you do, they're gonna be in the same location. And then you have two on this side right here. Okay, it's just a simple push and pull. Next, we're gonna come up underneath the bumper and there's gonna be eight 10 millimeter bolts total. So we have one and two, that's just simply holding the bumper to the fender liner. Then if you come up underneath, you're gonna see four more 10 millimeter bolts. One, can't miss them. Two, three, and four. Take those four out. And then two more over here, same thing as the other side, just holding it to the fender liner. So eight total, go ahead and remove those. All right, then we're gonna come up top and there's two pop clips, one on each side. So one right here and one on the other side that's identical. Just get a little plastic pry tool or a little screwdriver, pop it up and pull it out. Um, then four 10 millimeter bolts up here. So one, two, three, and four right there. Go ahead and remove the two pop clips and four 10, mill 10 millimeter bolts from the top. Now we can get our fingers behind this panel right here, between that panel and the fender liner back here, and just simply pop it out from the truck. Like so. We're gonna do this on both sides. So you can see that panel's loose. Go ahead and do it on the passenger side. Ready to pop the grill off the truck. So you do not have to do any other wiring harnesses on the Pro. If you look back there, you're gonna see some extra wiring that's all gonna come with the grill. So don't worry about, you don't have to disconnect the light bar or anything like that. And I've also seen a lot of confusion on these pieces right here. You do not have to remove them. They're gonna come with the grill as well. I'm not sure why some people think you have to take them off, but you do not. So now that we have it all kind of relatively loosened on the side, I'm just gonna take, again, if you're doing this with two people, it's much easier. By yourself, it's easily doable, but just get your hand underneath the top and the bottom, give it a little pop like that and then support it so it doesn't fall. Come over the other side, do the same thing. And before you even do this, make sure you have a soft surface to, to lay it down on. Obviously you don't want to scratch it, so I have a blanket on the floor right there. So I'm just gonna kind of support it with my knee. Pop 
pop it and it's now free from the truck. And as you can see, there's no other wiring or anything you need to, to take off. Um, one other thing I want to point out, let me just set this down here. So the other thing I want to point out real quick is this bracket right here, this black piece. There's been some confusion on that as well. This does not need to be removed. Um, you may have to remove it for the new bumper, but to remove our grill, it does not have to come off. It's basically just a lower grill support, and it's the grill is actually only attached to it by clips. So when you pop the grill loose, it just comes right off that black piece. Now we want to remove the crash bar, 17 millimeter bolts. There's two here and two right here. Go ahead and remove those four and the other four on the other side. Next up are these little grommets that are on. So when you look at the frame right here, you can see them right here. There's one here one on the inside, and then same thing over there. I've already removed the driver's side just to give you a look. So you have to expose those holes right there. Same thing on the outer part. All right, to go ahead and remove those four plugs. Now we can go ahead and remove the skid plate. So very easy, six 12 millimeter bolts. These front two don't take out all the way, just loosen them and I'll show you why. Now obviously if you don't have the TRD skid plate, I believe there's four bolts that you have to remove. On the TRD skid plate there is six. So again, these two, but don't remove those all the way. I already loosened them some. And then if you look up underneath, you can't miss them. There's gonna be four other spots. Those four, the two in the front and two in the rear, you can go ahead and remove those all the way. Now here's why you don't remove those front two all the way. As you can see, the skid plate supports itself once you remove those back four because it's on a lip. So to get it off, all you do is pick up and then slide it over in those grooves. And let's see if I can get out of here without having the truck off the ground at all. And then you can see it comes off the truck like that. So there's grooves right here that support, that get supported by those two bolts that you leave in the truck. That's why you don't take them out all the way. All right, let's get the bumper prepped and ready for install. So this is the piece we're gonna be removing from the factory bumper. As you can see, I masked off the painted areas. You wanna just get some skinny, mild tape right down in the creases. The painted area, you do not wanna scratch up because that's obviously still gonna be there when we're done. Once you have it taped off, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over onto the backside. Got you directly overhead, so hopefully you can get a pretty good look at what I'm doing. So we have all of these wiring harnesses directly running directly across. Basically what we need to do is just free them up. I've already done a couple just so you can see. They will pop out. Just use a plastic pry tool like this get it up underneath there and, and pry it out. Just be careful, you don't wanna damage anything, but it's pretty simple to do. So we wanna go ahead and remove the wiring harnesses from right here all the way over. Um, just remove them with the clips. Um, you can leave the clips intact, obviously, but we just wanna pop it so the, whole, so the whole harness is free. Once you have all them free, you can go ahead and undo the wiring harnesses from the sensors if you want. If you're, if you're careful on this next step, you don't really have to. All I'm gonna do is just take a couple zip ties and I'm just gonna kind of take the wiring harness and zip tie it up out of the way because next step, we're gonna start doing the fun stuff. We're gonna be cutting out this lower section here. Um, so again, if you feel better, you can go ahead and take the sensors out and all that stuff. They're just, just clips. I mean, it's very simple to remove them. I just don't really see the need if you're careful on the next step. Totally up to you. I'm going to zip tie mine up out of the way. The only two sensors I am going to remove are the ones right here and right here. This one's already out. To do it, I'll put a picture on your screen, but basically there's just two blue tabs, one on the top, one on the bottom. Separate the blue tabs by pushing them you know, out from the sensor and you'll be able to pop the sensor out like so. And then just set that aside. These do have a black cap on them. Mine stayed intact. If yours comes off, just make sure you put that back on. So next we're gonna remove this. So there's two different panel, well, two different pieces, I guess. This flat black area in here is held in with clips. You can see them all around this spot here. So you can do one of two things. You could either, all you do is push in on a tab and, and push it down through the hole. It's very easy. Or we're not gonna reuse these. You can cut them if you want, however you wanna do it. 
um, just go ahead and remove all of these black clips. So let me show you, we could actually start separating this black piece on the front that I told you that we were gonna remove from this black frame. And this will make more sense as I'm going and you get to see the two pieces separated, what I'm actually talking about. So here you can see and get a little bit better of a look of what I meant. So this is the piece that's held in with clips. And then we still have this black outer frame. That's where we're gonna be cutting and doing some trimming. Here's a better look from the front. You can see that big black panel that we removed. Now what we have to do is take our cutoff wheel right there. And this is gonna be everybody's favorite part. If you're doing this on your own, you just start cutting. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the majority or the mass of this first, and then we'll go back and clean up our cuts and I'll give you a really good look at where exactly you wanna end your cuts. So I'm basically just gonna take my cutoff wheel, cut right there, come over here and cut right there, cut right there, and that'll free up this whole bottom piece and get it out of our way. And then we'll go back and clean it up. We'll give you a good look at that. quick look at where we are at so far. So you can see we did most of the work with the big wheel and now we're gonna come back with a smaller cutoff wheel, but you can get a look, you can see the flat part in there and then how it comes up. So you can see where we've cut so far. I'll give you a good look all around just so you can see what we've done with the big wheel. And then of course, I'll give you a look at the finished product and what we're gonna do with the smaller one. It's gonna be a little tough to get you a good angle while I'm cutting, but we're basically gonna go to the edge. You'll see what I'm gonna do, and then again, I'll give you a look when I'm done. But we're, we're gonna wanna cut off all this vertical section. And then up here, we wanna go up. You can see I taped off this piece with the fog lights because we're gonna go up, tucked up close to the bottom of that, uh, of that piece. Okay, so that is definitely the most time consuming part of this entire process, but let's give you a close up look all the way around of how we cut. There's a little bit of that flat black piece left in there. And obviously you'll see it when it's up on the truck, how it fits. We came right up to the bottom of this. Don't touch the face of this obviously, but right up to the bottom of it. Get you a look underneath there maybe. And then this piece right here, what you do is you come straight across even with this bottom, not this bottom. You can see, see how there's like that little lip there? So that's how that should look. Again, this piece straight across. I might just kind of sand that just a little bit more. That's the only thing I did off camera was I just kind of sanded all around just to make this as smooth as possible. I can see that's a little uneven um, and my OCD might go nuts with that. So I might sand that just a little bit more, but there you can see how it looks all the way across. Again, same thing, so it's straight across. Whoops, sorry about that, my light just went out. But you can see how it's straight across with this, not that, okay? And then same thing over here. All right, let's move on. All right, we're ready to start throwing this thing on the truck. So here's all the hardware you're gonna get. And I actually just realized they screwed my hardware up. <laughs> As you can see, these four bolts right here are supposed to have four nylon locking nuts that look like that. They only sent me three, and then this smaller one that actually doesn't fit any other bolt in the kit. So it was just a mistake on their part, no big deal, we'll work with it, um, but just so you know, this is what you should be getting. Four of the um, 3 8 inch bolts with the corresponding locking nuts, four half inch um, with, those are the, the locking nuts that are gonna go with the four inch or I'm sorry, the four one inch bolts. The two longer bolts are gonna be securing the winch plate to the truck, which I'll show you all this while we go. Corresponding washers, um, couple, I'm sorry, four smaller carriage bolts. I'll show you what they're for. And then um, some quarter inch bolts right there. And again, we'll go over all this as we're doing the install. Those two up there are not washers. They're actually spacers. You can see how they're a little bit thicker. So I'll show you where exactly they go. Let's get the winch plate up on the truck. All right, so here's our winch plate and um, they send spacers with this. I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna need these spacers. I'll keep you guys posted. Obviously, you're gonna see by the time this video comes out, I'll know clearly, um, but they send a sicker, uh, I'm sorry, a thicker set and then, and then a thinner set. Okay, and where these spacers go, if you need, if we need to use them, when you're looking at the winch plate, 
this area right here on each side of the winch plate, okay? Um, and what you can only, they only line up one way. So we're actually gonna use the thinner ones to start just to see how everything lines up. And when you look at them, you can see the top has a tab, the bottom has a cutout. Well, if you look at the winch plate, same thing. The one end has a cutout to where when you put this down, one on each side, those cutouts are gonna match perfectly, okay? So again, we're gonna use the thinner set just to see how everything lines up. And I'm gonna take my other thinner one, same thing, put it over on the other side. And if you line up those cutouts, the rest takes care of itself. You, you, you can't put them in wrong. All right, so spacers are in, let's get it mounted on the truck. All right, to get the plate mounted to the truck, basically what we're gonna do is it's gonna go in this orientation here, as you'll see. This part is so much easier if you have a second set of hands. I'm doing it solo just to show you that it can easily be done just as well, um, but it is definitely easier if you have a second set of hands. All you're gonna need to, to mount it is you're gonna take the two longer bolts that come in the kit, put one of the biggest um, washers on there, and where we're gonna mount it to is this part right here, on each side of course is going to mount to the frame the spot that we remove those little circle plugs before two on each side that's where we're going to be sliding this bolt through so what you're going to do is again take a washer on there and it's going to go from the out from the outside in it's going to go through this then the frame then this and then we'll be able to get a washer and a nut on the other side i'll give you a better look once i get it up there All right, let's give you a better look. So you can see those holes where we popped out those grommets or whatever you want to call them before. So you have the bolt, a washer, goes through the winch plate, through the frame, out the other end, and then you're gonna use another washer and one of the bigger nylon locking nuts. Do that on each side. Do not tighten these down just yet. You can see the other one back in there. All right, so just get them started just to hold the winch plate in place. For the next step, we're gonna be using the four one inch bolts. Set those aside. We're gonna need two of the 3 8 bolts and then corresponding nylon locking nuts. So two of the 3 8 nylon locking nuts and then all four of um, those to go with the one inch. And then of course, we're gonna need four of the bigger washers. All right, let me show you how this is gonna work. So if you come up underneath you're gonna see that we have one, two, and then three spots to put our bolts up through. Now where it's gonna, where the bolts are gonna come out are back inside the frame there. I'll show you a little trick. Um, thanks to CBI actually, I actually, I saw them do this so I can't take the credit for the idea. Um, I saw them do it and it worked pretty good. So, but what you're gonna do in the order of this is important. So working from the back, to the front, you're gonna go half inch with the washer, three eighths inch with the washer, and you, you needed two of those smaller washers. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't show that when I was grabbing the stuff that we needed, but, and then another half inch with the washer in the front. Okay, so it's basically half inch bolt, three eighth, three eighth inch bolt, half inch bolt, and the corresponding locking nuts are gonna go in there. Um, so let me show you a little tip and we'll get that done. So we'll start with the one that's all the way back. And this is a little tip. Again, thanks CBI for pointing this out. I'm not gonna lie, I never thought of this. Put a little, take your wrench, put a little piece of electrical tape. This is three quarter inch, just so you know the size. And stick your um, nylon locking nut to the tape. And now you can actually stick it back in there and not have to worry about the, the nut falling out of your wrench. Take your quarter inch bolt with the washer, up through that last spot back there. Reach in there with your wrench and go ahead and get it started. So don't tighten that down just yet and get it started. We'll do the same thing for the middle bolt here. This is a size 15 millimeter wrench that I'm using up top. And then lastly, the third bolt up here in the front. And again, you don't want to tighten any of these down just yet. All right, so once you have all six starting three on each side, we can go ahead and now tighten these six down. 
Now we can go ahead and tighten down our two longer bolts, one on each side. All right, next we're gonna get the faceplate ready to get on the truck. So we're gonna take these two brackets and there is a difference. One is for driver side, one is for passenger side. They're not marked, but how you can tell the difference is, you can see how we have the bumper laying. This is the bottom, you can tell by the mesh. And obviously we're looking at the back of it. So you wanna take the bracket. There's two slots on the side of the bumper over here. You wanna install it to where, when you're looking at the bracket, the bracket itself, one surface has two slotted areas. The other surface just has one and it's smaller and skinnier. You want the small skinny side facing down so it's oriented like this, okay? And I'll take a picture on the screen or I'll show you, I'll give you a better look once I get them both on because this does matter. You need this to line up properly. So once you have it in position, the two slots over here, you're gonna take two of the quarter inch carriage bolts and you're gonna use that slot right there Line it up in one of those slots. Take a washer, a nylon locking nut, and just get it started. Now we'll take another carriage bolt, and same thing. And you can see how there's play, you know, just to, so when we get it up underneath the truck, we can get everything lined up and, and secured. All right, quick look at these brackets, and they're loose. Like I said, you want them loose right now, um, but this is how they're gonna fit onto the bumper. Okay, we're ready to put the face on. Now, if you are running a winch, this is when you would wanna mount it. This bracket here may or may not have to come off depending on your winch. We are gonna be running one, I just don't have it yet, so we'll make that in a separate video. Um, there's a couple other things that you may need to do, again, depending on the winch and the size. We won't have to remove this right now because we're not running one. So I'm gonna grab the faceplate and we'll put it in place. Okay, so we're just gonna slide it over. Like so. So you can see how the toe hooks, or the, the tie down spots fit in there. Let's grab our hardware and we'll secure this down. You can see how the faceplate mounts up to the frame right here. So earlier when I put it on the screen to save two of your factory bolts when we removed our crash, um, our crash bar, you're gonna use the factory in the bottom spot down here. So it secures in two spots, one in the bottom down here and one at the top. All right, so let's just get the factory bolt started. All right, then for the top spot, you're gonna take a 3 8 inch bolt with the washer, you're gonna come through the backside with it and those thicker spacers that I showed you in the beginning of the video, uh, or towards the beginning of the video, that has to go between the face plate and the frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bolt through the, the frame and then this spacer needs to go in between the face plate and the frame, like so. And then we take another washer and nylon locking nut, looks like that. We're gonna do the other thing, all right, I'm sorry, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and we'll tighten it down. Time to get the girl back on the truck and check this thing out. All that's left to do is come up underneath and those brackets that we put on the side of the faceplate, you can see how they're gonna attach. This is the factory bumper right here, or factory piece of the bumper. So you're just gonna bring it up like so. Take washer and a quarter inch bolt up through, washer on top, nylon locking nut. So we're gonna do that in both spots, um, one on each side where this bracket is. And then once we have it attached to the bumper and have everything positioned where we want it, we'll go ahead and tighten up the um, carriage bolts that we left loose so we're able to adjust this. All right guys, all that's left to do is button everything back up. Just reverse your steps. I'm not gonna show it on camera. Um, you're just reversing what you did to take the thing off. Double check, make sure all your hardware is back on. Plug your sensors back in. If you have the Pro, don't forget to plug in your side marker lights on your fender flares. And uh, yeah, just reverse what you did to take this thing off. I'm gonna go ahead and get my skid plate back on. I'm gonna put the brand new tow hooks on here and we'll give you, a, um, you know, we'll find a look at how this looks on the TRD Pro and we'll give you an up close look at the fitment as well. 
Hey guys, before we take the truck outside and I show you, give you an up close look at this thing. First off, I freaking love this bumper. It is awesome looking. It's just enough. It's nothing overboard. Um, it is just an awesome, awesome bumper. I love the look of it, the style and all that good stuff. But I wanted to add this little clip on. We're, this is the day after we that we did the install. I posted some pictures on the ton, in the Tundra groups on Facebook and Instagram. I had a lot of comments saying, wondering about would it fit with the hybrids? Now, clearly you just saw me install it on the TRD Pro, it will fit. Where the confusion's coming in, and I just wanna clarify this for anybody considering running this bumper, because it came up a lot. If you go to CBI um, website, as of right now, December 12, 2022, it will say that it doesn't fit with the TRD Pro or the hybrids, because there's extra fans in the front. The confusion is the bumper will absolutely fit with the hybrids, as you saw. Where you're going to get into trouble is, um, and I shouldn't even say trouble, let me clarify that. If you're not going to run a winch, you can install it on the truck, boom, done, fits perfect, no issues at all. If you're going to run a winch, that's where you need to do a little modification, but it's very easy to do. Basically, all you have to do is drill new mounting holes, and I'm going to give you a look at what I'm talking about um, on the winch plate. So the hybrids have a couple extra fans in the front, CBI. I guess they didn't have a hybrid on hand when they designed the winch plate and the bumper. That's the issue. That's all you have to do is just drill new mounting holes. Um, we are going to be running the Warren VR Evo 12S. Now, I, before anybody goes in the comment and says, no, that's not true. I spoke to CBI myself. They did confirm that's the case. That's the only reason they say it won't work with the hybrids is because of the mounting locations for the, the winch. Um, and I also spoke to a gentleman named Sean in the groups. We were talking back and forth um, privately, and he, sh he sent me pictures. He has this bumper with, that, with the, Warren Evo, um, the Warren VR Evo 12S winch on his Pro, and it works perfect. It fits fine. All they had to do, he didn't install it himself. The company that installed it for him, they just drilled new mounting locations. That's it. Now, I I'm going to have a video here on the channel showing the winch install as soon as I get it. So stay tuned if you want to follow it. CBI is working on a fix for it. They will be offering an updated version going forward. But again, as of right now, um, December 12, 2022, that's the only reason it says that it won't work with the hybrids. Just so you know, it absolutely will fit. And if you run a Warren or something like that, you just have to drill new mounting holes on it. I will show you um, that install when we get the winch. Let me give you a look at the, ho the holes I'm talking about and we'll take the truck outside, give you a look at this thing. All right, so I'm not taking the grill off to show you guys this. You can see it. You can get a look at what I'm talking about from up above here. So the winch mounting plate that we installed is right down there. You can see the four holes, one here, one there, one there, and one there. So basically, all you need to do is drill four new holes slightly forward. I, I, I wish I had my winch on hand to show you this, but stay tuned for my winch install video. I'll show you what I mean. But that's all you have to do is just drill new holes, line up your winch, get it to where it fits and clears the fans, um, the extra fans that the hybrid have up here. Now, when we install the winch, we're also going to have to, that black bracket right here that I showed you, um, throughout the video that will have to come off when we put the winch in and then there's a hose down in there that will also have to relocate very very simple to do I'll show you that in my winch install all right so those are the four holes I'm talking about drill new holes line your winch up make sure it clears everything you're good to go all right guys there it is we had to wait till the next day I ran out of daylight last night wanted to get you a good look with plenty of light you can see Gear America tow hooks. We went with the Uber version, rated for 80,000 pounds. The fitment on this bumper is awesome. I don't really want to talk about that right there. That's when I dropped the grill assembly. Get, or get somebody to help you take this thing on and off the truck, just to be safe. Learn from my mistakes. But the fitment is just incredible. Follow those cut lines I showed you. And uh, it just looks awesome. So much happier with this front bumper and the fact that we have tow hooks. Stay tuned for the winch install. That'll be coming up. We don't have the winch just yet, as I mentioned, but this bumper is awesome, and I love the fact that we now have recovery uh, locations in the front. All right, we'll give you one last kind of up-close look here. You can see the fitment is perfect. I couldn't be happier. Love it. You can get a look down there maybe with the TRD skid plate. Fits perfect. No issues at all. Love the bumper. Thanks for watching, guys. Any questions, put them down below. See you on the next one. Take care.